In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Happy Easter, everyone. And welcome as we gather together on this glorious Easter day to celebrate the greatest miracle of God's love to the world, the miracle of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, we celebrate this miracle, this resurrection of Jesus, in the midst of a very heavy time for us. And this day is very important for us, very necessary for us, because it is here to lift our spirits, to help us to know that even though we do experience the darkness of these days, the heaviness of these days, this coronavirus, that there is always hope. There is always a light at the end of the tunnel. We look to Jesus who suffered and died and was buried, but who rose again on the third day. This being that third day, we celebrate Jesus' resurrection from the dead. And so we come together at this Mass today that is celebrated in, in all of our intentions, especially all of the Easter intentions that you have brought to us, all of your intentions of that who are here participating at this Mass with us today, all of the intentions that you have in your hearts from all the places of all the people who are watching, whether it's my family in Michigan, in Ohio, Illinois, New Jersey, uh, the Philippines, various places where I know people are, are gathered and watching, or not maybe gathered, but watching with us today on this Easter Sunday. I welcome you, and let us prepare now our hearts to come into communion with Jesus in this liturgy as we acknowledge our sins and as we ask God to grant us mercy and forgiveness that Jesus won for us through his passion, death, and resurrection. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Jesus Christ. 
Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of our Lord's resurrection may through the renewal brought by your Spirit rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him to, on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible not to all people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one anointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. Our reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. On the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. 
Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Again, I wish everyone a very happy Easter Sunday. This is a very special celebration. It's the most important celebration in the entire church year, higher than even Christmas, because this day gives meaning to our faith. St. Paul says if Christ has not been raised, then our, our faith is not worth anything. But it is because the fact that Jesus rose that we have meaning in our faith, and our faith is alive because we believe in a God that that lives. We believe in Jesus who lives. The scripture that we heard from the the Apostle St. John, again, was an eyewitness to these events. On the third day, Mary Magdalene, who had gone to the tomb, thinking that that, uh, Jesus was still there, Her and her friends went there to properly anoint the body of Jesus. And they were thinking as they were going, gee, there's this big stone in front of the tomb. Who's going to roll that stone back for us so that we can get in and anoint Jesus' body properly? Because they couldn't do it when they buried him on Friday evening because the Sabbath began. And it's against their law and tradition to do such things on the Sabbath, on the celebration of the Sabbath. And so they had to wait till early Sunday morning after the Sabbath to come and properly anoint Jesus' body for burial. And they got the surprise of their life as they neared the tomb and saw that the stone was rolled back and that the tomb was empty. Well, the first thing you would think is that, well, someone had stolen the body. Who took the body? That's what they were thinking. So Mary Magdalene ran off to to find the apostles, and it was Simon Peter and John who ran to the tomb, as, as was described in the gospel today. And even though they saw that the tomb was empty, it says John himself wrote, for they still did not yet understand the scriptures that Jesus had to rise from the dead. I'd like to go back to the second Sunday of Lent, in which the gospel uh, uh, proclaimed for us that miracle of the transfiguration of Jesus, when Jesus took Peter and James and John up on Mount Tabor and was transfigured before them. He shone brilliantly like light. And as they were coming down after this beautiful appearance of Jesus, this transfiguration, he told them not to say anything to anyone, not until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead, And at that time, they didn't know what Jesus was talking about either. But it was after his resurrection that it all came to light. It all started to make sense for them. And they were able to understand what was happening. Jesus truly was dead, but he's alive again. And that is an amazing miracle and something for them even for them, was very difficult for them to understand and to to process in their lives, but they did. And we, 2,000 years later, we are celebrating this, this great miracle of the resurrection of Jesus. In fact, it's the reason that, that we are Christians today. We wouldn't be Christians today. Normally, on Easter Sunday, this church would be packed with people, and normally, like on Christmas and Easter, I would stand up here and I'd take a picture of the, of the church uh, to see all the people that are here. This place was just standing room only. But today, if you looked out, all the pews are empty except for just a few people that are here celebrating this Mass. That's, that's kind of sad that it has to, to be that way now. But still, our hearts are lifted that nothing can stand in between us and God. Nothing, unless our own, our own stubbornness and our own sinfulness, because God calls all of us to himself. He loves each one of us. That's why he sent his son, as John told us, 
that God so loved the world that he gave us his only son, not to condemn the world, but so that the world would have life through him, so that you and I would have life through him. And we do have life. Thanks to the resurrection of Jesus. Thanks to what we are celebrating today. So I wish all of you a, a joyful Easter Sunday and a joyful celebration of, of this day. Let your hearts be lifted because we need that. We need that now when, when people are so worried and, and, and there's so many troubles and our hearts are heavy, you know, with all the, the people are afraid with uh, what's been happening. People have lost their jobs and, and the children are out of school and, and things are all confused and seem upside down. That's exactly what the disciples felt when Jesus was crucified. Everything was turned upside down for them. But the third day came, and they had their doubts. Was take, their doubts were taken away, and they believed, and they had hope because Jesus was alive. Yes, we're going through this difficult time now, but it will come to an end as well. Jesus promises that. We always have hope because God always has our best interest at heart. And Easter is our assurance of that. So celebrate this day. Let your hearts be light. Because as we heard in the responsorial psalm today, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad because this is a day for rejoicing. And speaking of that, I know I haven't, I haven't told one of my very bad jokes uh, or stories in a long time, but I do have one, so if you were, have been waiting for it, some people will ask me, well, why haven't you told any of your stories or funny stories? Well, it was Lent, and we wanted to be more serious. So I'm going to tell you this, this, just this little one, and maybe I'll be able to hear you laughing through the screen. Maybe, maybe not. But anyway, there is a six-year-old little girl, Angie, and her four-year-old brother, Joel, were, were sitting together in church, and little Joel giggled and sang, and he talked out loud. Finally, his big sister had had enough of that, and he says, you're not supposed to talk out loud in church, she said sternly to him. And little Joel said, well, why? Who's going to stop me? And Angie pointed to the back of the church, and he said, see those two men standing in the back of the church? Well, those are the hushers that keep you quiet. Come on. I can hear you. Thank you. Today, instead of the normal Nicene Creed in which we are uh, normally say at Mass, we are going to re renew our baptismal vows. Each one of us, when we were baptized, we were brought to church probably by uh, our parents and our godparents, for those of us anyway that were baptized as little children, and they made those vows for us. But as we grew, we made them our own, and we renew them every so often, and we renew them every year on Easter Sunday. And so we're going to renew our baptismal vows today, and I'm going to ask you uh, six questions, and all I want to, you to do is to answer by saying, I do, as we renew those vows. So let us prepare now to renew our baptismal vows. My dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his holy works, his, I mean, Satan and his bad works, and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do. I do. I do. And do you renounce all of his evil works? And do you renounce all his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered, under, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. And do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. This is our faith, the faith of the Church, and we are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, keep us by his grace together 
in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Rejoicing now in the good news of the resurrection, let us offer to God our prayers. For God's holy church, that we may always be a visible sign of the risen Lord in our world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people, especially those living in fear and anxiety, due to the current pandemic, that they may see the risen Christ as their hope and refuge. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those suffering from illness, that they find comfort and healing in the risen Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us celebrating the resurrection of Christ together, that we may bring that joy to our family members, friends, neighbors, and all who cannot be here with us today, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they share in the glory of the risen Lord forever. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all of those remembered in our parish Easter intentions and for our unspoken prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. O God of abundant life, the empty tomb brought hope to your disciples. May we find hope and peace in Jesus Christ, your Son, who is truly risen, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Thank you. 
Please pray now, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable now to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For Jesus is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, he restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sings together the unending hymn of your glory, Father, as together we now acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. And therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of our, your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, Jesus himself took bread. And giving you thanks, Father, he said the blessing, he broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and giving you thanks, Father, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. And look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit 
may become one body and one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her beloved spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, Father, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, George Leo Thomas, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops and all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of the people that you have summoned here now before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, for there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. O Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Lord, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of Easter peace. Behold our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Behold the Lamb of God, 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called now to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. My thanks to all of you for joining us today on this glorious Easter Sunday. Thank you for being a part of this, this liturgy. I know it's uh, a bit different this year. The, the church is empty. I look out and there's no one here except just a few people. And I thank them for being here. I thank our Scola for, for being here today and making this a joyous celebration to, to Bernie and to Julia, who are lectors, and also to Joel, our altar server, and to, and to Mikhail, who uh, has been keeping the cameras going and, and making us available to you. So thank, thanks, thanks to all of you for that. Um, also, I'd just like to wish my very best to to all of you who are out there uh, joining us today, I hope this is a joyous Easter for you, despite the, the difficulties that we're all going through, the challenges that we're going through. But let Easter fill your heart and know that Jesus is alive and well, he's with us. And that, let that be the joy that, that truly fills your heart. I send my wishes to, to all of my family and friends out there in uh, Michigan and Ohio and uh, Illinois, New Jersey, because Mike's father lives in in New Jersey, so hi, Mike's father, and also to um, all of our people who are watching with us today. A very happy Easter to all of you. Enjoy this, enjoy this day. This week we will celebrate the octave of Easter, which is the continuation, the overflow of this day. We can't just celebrate one day of Easter, so the octave continues, and, and the Easter season goes 50 days until, until Pentecost, so we will be celebrating uh, the joy of this season. So join us again for our celebration this uh, octave of Easter coming up Monday through Friday. And now, before we say goodbye, we, let's, let's ask our Lord to bless us on this very special day. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Yeah.
give glory to our risen King. Raise your voices, Alleluia. Our Lord who died now truly lives, through us is power. 